Malkin and Crosby both hit huge milestones. Yes. Of course, it was against the Buffalo Sabres because why wouldn't it be? Crosby with the 1,600 point. Malkin was his 500th career goal. And it's crazy because that Malkin goal was actually kind of sick. I'm not going to lie. The Malkin's second opportunity. Malkin's been awesome to start He's this been great. 11 points through, what, the first five, six games yeah. that he's played so no, he's far. He's been really good. Crosby's been good as well. I think this Penguins team now, Tristan Jari, has been complete ass. They have four more yeah, years of that $5.5 million yeah, contract. I don't However, think though, you can go forward with him as the starter. Bloomquist is phenomenal. And Nadelkovich is coming back, too. They yes. just recalled him. So This this is where you're in a tough spot as the Penguins because you could ride with the Bloomquist and Nadelkovich tandem if Jari Honestly, wasn't making this so much money. So if Bloomquist and you know Nadelkovich comes back and he, you know, he plays like he did last year at the end of the year, do you just bury Jari in the minors? Does he... I mean, I mean you, no one would claim him off of waivers. I want to – I'm – hold on. Jari um, – I don't even know where to – like, I know where to go. Okay, Puckpedia here. So, I'm looking at – where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Like, kind of similar to what, you know, Edmonton did with with uh, Jack Campbell. Yeah. They just buried him in the minors. I mean, no one's going to claim that contract unless a team really needs a goalie. But, you know, at this point, I think Jari might be hurting the Penguins more than Jari he's helping Jari, he's not good. I'm sorry. He, he's – so if he went to the minors, he'd be making – he'd be 6.8 according to Puckpedia. His cap hit would be 5.3. Oh, the cap hit doesn't go away. But no. It just – it would free up a roster spot for Pittsburgh to have someone, like, instead of having to carry three goalies, like, if they don't trust him and he's not going to play, or maybe just you know, try to send a message and try to help him get his game back. So – if they were to buy out Tristan Jari, next season his cap hit would be 1.7, 26-27, five million dollars, 27-28, five million dollars, and then the other three years, seven hundred and ninety-seven thousand. I, I don't see a buyout as a viable. No, option. I don't see, but it, it's fun to look at because I think you realistically can't buy out Jari until twenty-seven, twenty-eight. At I mean, he might be a, a goalie that. They might trade like a premium draft pick. For. I think you can trade Jari and throw in a draft pick, be like, take on the entire contract. Yeah, they would team with like, a lot of cap space, and maybe the team just either eats the contract and he plays for them, or they buy the contract out. Yeah, I mean, I don't know what teams off the top of my head that really would be viable for it, but listen, or just find a team that like maybe eat half the salary and to give them like a second round pick. And listen, if you're the Penguins and Bloomquist keeps playing like this, and let's say Nadalkovich plays a few games when he comes back, and he's eating it up too. He's playing great. I mean, Nadalkovich took over the net at the end of the year last he year. Was, he, he was great for that. Yeah. He was he was one of the reasons I saw the Malkin and Crosby on why that team was fighting for a playoff spot yep. late in the season. They got back into the race in mid-March. And I think if that happens where Nadalkovich plays great and you have Bloomquist playing great, like – do you, you either, A, like you say, you wave Jari and he goes to the minors because nobody's going to pick up that contract. I mm -hmm. highly doubt it. No, not um, the way he's been playing. Exactly. Um, and two, or you say, screw it, you waste the goddamn roster spot on a third goaltender and you say, well, we'll play Jari here and there and then we'll play Nadalkovich and Bloomquist most of the, the time. I think the most realistic option is just finding a team to eat the contract. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, even if they retain half the contract, I think that's still worth it for them. Like, I think this team could barely sneak into the playoffs if they have pretty decent goaltending, at least how they're playing up front right now. I mean, I they, they rely a lot on, you know, Crosby and Malkin still. and It's kind of scary. If they, they get subpar goaltending, like, it's going to be tough. It's going to be really tough. And even if this team did make the playoffs, I don't see them doing anything past the first round. So I will say Crosby, Malkin are reaching these milestones. I we're seeing greatness. Oh we, we yeah. already we already see it with Ovi. we now we're seeing it with Crosby and Malkin too. Like you know, it is kind of bittersweet seeing like these legends like in the twilights of this career because I mean they've been in the NHL for like as long as I've been watching hockey. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it, it is kind of tough seeing these players get older. I mean, I'm glad they're still performing at a high level. But, you know, Malkin's 38, Crosby's 37. Like, realistically, maybe, you know, two, three years left for Malkin, three, four left for Crosby. So, like, we're getting pretty close to the end. And I'm, I'm glad they're still fun to watch. This, Sid still looks like his old self. He's not as fast as he used to be. But mm -hmm. he's still quick. He can still score. He can still do everything in the ace. He still owns the Buffalo Sabres. So. Of course. I The passion from these two is un. Match. I mean, we saw it against Buffalo when when they went down four one. You they pan to the bench and Malkin screaming his ass off. And guess what? They come back when in overtime. Yeah, like, I mean, there was a good moment too in that game. I don't. Well, they, I think it was three to one. I don't think okay. it was four to one. Where uh, 
they scored a shorthanded goal to make a three and two. Like Crosby and Malkin are like hugging each other on the bench. Mm-hmm. Like they still care a lot about winning. So as I mean, they're playing like they still really have a good passion. And you know, Pittsburgh, it, it's a tough spot for Pittsburgh because you know you'd love to get those two guys one more cup, but it's just with the way the rest of the roster is built, I, I just don't see how that happens. There, this roster isn't good enough to even kind of compete for a cup. And that's me being brutally honest. I would love. Love to see Sid and Malkin have one last run at a cup, but I just think this roster isn't built for that, and that sucks. And-